Hey y'all, taking a break from Taka Devlogs to give updates on programming language news from 2024. And here I've got my Languish Programming Language Trends site showing some of the top languages in terms of activity during each quarter. And I've made one bit of a change recently in my default stats I'm using. I was using GitHub issues in addition to GitHub stars and Stack Overflow questions, but I've gotten afraid of bots happening. So for example, if I include HTML and look at GitHub issues, we see this tremendous growth of HTML, for example, which cuts the pie share for everybody else. And from looking a little bit at the data, it seems to me like this might be largely due to bot activity on GitHub. And bots is actually part of why I stopped using pull requests earlier also, in terms of the automated pull requests you see on TypeScript and JavaScript repos. So I might need to do better at figuring out how to weed out bot activity so this kind of stuff doesn't happen. But meanwhile, going back to these languages, we see that although it's not continuing to grow, Python has stayed on top, and JavaScript has continued to fall, while TypeScript has continued to rise. And many other languages in this category have been relatively stable recently, if not for longer. Going further down the list of popular languages, we also see a fair amount of stability recently. Even in cases like Ruby, that had been much popular earlier on GitHub, are not falling as much as they had been. Although unsurprisingly, further down the list of languages, we see a lot more activity. For example, Zig and Nix have had solid growth, while Solidity has been falling in recent times. And sometimes these are a little bit misleading. For example, if we look at GDScript specifically, it's down from where it was a year ago, but still much higher than it had been in previous years. We'll see where it goes from here. And I like to continue to look at even less actively used programming languages because it doesn't require a whole lot of activity in terms of the pie share to have a lot of users. All the languages on this list do get regular use and have very solid and active communities. Although we notice the real winner in this group is Typist, which has had solid growth for some quarters now. It's a typesetting language that competes with LaTeX and it is gaining some attention. The last set of languages I'm gonna look at for trends today is this group here. I'm just grouping these by languages I find interesting that are in a particular popularity range. Again, according to GitHub and Stack Overflow activity each quarter. I'm not sure if this COBOL growth is real or not, but it has some little bit of a trend line there. And we definitely see some attention during the past year for Gleam. I'll get back to it again later in this video, but I think the 1.0 release helped quite a bit. Odin also has seen some pretty solid growth during the past year. And in terms of other ways of looking at programming language stats, plrank.com by Code Report aggregates rankings of languages across a number of different sources, including language. And for information more generally, the plangs.page website by Emmanuel Oga is a great place to find information on programming languages generally, including links to language and various other sources. And it's actually sort of a relational database here and provides filtering on various topics as well. So you can say, I want to find languages that compile to JavaScript and are functional, if I do the all category at least. So this might be a way of finding languages with particular features that you're looking for or seeing how languages relate to each other. But meanwhile, on to the news. Python 3.13 came out this year which among other things included experimental support for taking out the gill and also a JIT compiler. These mostly are looking forward to future improvements, but it's definitely interesting developments in C Python land. And in languages that serve some of the similar space that Python does, R had released 4.4 this year, which interestingly is prioritizing a focus on 64-bit rather than 32-bit platforms, although it continues to support both. Julia 1.11 came out this year, which among other things has pre-compiled file relocatability. This is all about making it easier for Julia to start up faster, if I understand correctly. And interestingly, they're focusing on having explicit main functions as an option for running your applications. In some ways, sort of the opposite of what Java and C Sharp have been doing in recent years of trying to make main less needed. And MATLAB, I took a quick look at what they had out this year, and one thing I found interesting was an official way to describe what the arguments to your functions are supposed to be, including the shapes of the arrays. Moving on to JavaScript, we had the language features that are part of ECMAScript 2024, including array grouping and growable array buffers, as well as the new features accepted in 2024 for the ECMAScript 2025 edition. 
And of course, more and more people are using JavaScript by means of TypeScript. And I've seen some discussion of trying to standardize some of the syntax used by TypeScript, but I haven't paid close attention to where that's going. And TypeScript release schedule ends up with several releases per year. And we see things like support for latest ECMAScript standards, improved static checking, such as in this case, regular expression syntax checking, or here's improved handling of nullish and truthy checks, or never initialized variables. And moving on to Java, its new release schedule is twice per year. A lot of the new things coming out are still previews of upcoming features, but markdown documentation comments seem to be a thing now, as well as improvements just to the infrastructure of the JVM itself. And going back to Java 22, they had an improved foreign function and memory API to make it easier and more efficient to interface to native code from Java. Related to Java and big in the JVM space, Kotlin 2.0 came out last year, which primarily focuses on the new Kotlin K2 compiler, which is supposed to be faster and better and more forward looking so that they can do things like add new language features, such as in the Kotlin 2.1 that came out last year also, or at least there's language feature previews there. And along with .NET 9, C Sharp 13 came out last year, including support for things like var args on various collection types or improvements to ref locals and ref structs, which have a limited form of borrowing for more efficient pointer access to data. F Sharp 9 also came out with .NET 9, including things such as nullable reference types. And PHP continues to be a very popular language, which to me in recent years actually feels a lot more like a Java or a C Sharp as a kind of language. And in PHP 8.4, we have getter and setter functions, among other updates. Now, C++ is interesting to follow. We had C++ 23 recently, and the next release is gonna be C++ 26. The question is, what's actually gonna be in it? And sometimes it's hard to know for sure. Some of the big features people have talked about are reflection, contracts, and executors, but I don't necessarily see those in the currently approved proposals. Then again, it's also hard for me to keep up with all the things going on in C++ land. So if anybody has particular details on the status of those big features, feel free to make comments on the video. And the C language 23 standard was actually released in 2024, including things like null pointer T and local variable only type inference. And it also included the embed preprocessor directive, which is something that C++ is still lacking so far as I can tell. Golang had two releases last year, both of which with an interesting focus on for loops, such as this gotcha that actually affects a lot of languages. When you're looping over some variable and capturing that in a closure, are you getting a new value each time? Or is it the same variable being referenced across every iteration? and go change from the same one to being a new one captured each time, because that fits user expectations a lot more commonly in the intuition. They also added some tooling to help you not break your code. And in Go 1.23, they allow you to use iterator functions for looping over in your for loops. Moving on to Rust, there ought to be a Rust 2024 edition, but the release schedule says it's not out until February of 2025. So I guess there'll be more report on that later. But Rust, just like TypeScript, has several releases throughout the year on its release schedule. So just a survey of some of the things they mentioned, ABI compatibility updates, C string literals, getting more generalized support for things in their async functions, diagnostic attributes, improvements to const, lazy cell and lazy lock becoming stable, which make it easier to initialize your modules, for example. Moving of more things into core so that you don't need stood for it, which is a better support for embedded systems, improved tooling on cargo, and yet more constantness. Then moving on to Swift, we saw some releases this year, including Swift 5.10, providing full data isolation and concurrency. And then Swift 6 also came out, including things like, yes, more concurrency, typed throws, improved ownership, for example, as popularized by Rust and improved C++ interop. And I'm really thinking I need to spend some more time in Swift sometime. The Dart language had several releases this year. They added extension types, which are sometimes called say, new types or distinct types in some languages. They added support for WebAssembly as long as you got Wasm GC. And they also improved interop with JS and native backends. 
as well as the ability to use workspaces in your projects to work multiple packages together. Ruby 3.4 came out on Christmas like usual. We have an implied it parameter for your closures, a new parser for improved performance, and improvements to the JIT support, among other changes. I got curious, so I looked up what's going on in Perl. I still like to see that Perl 7 that was discussed once upon a time. I don't know what happened to that, but Perl 5.40 came out last year, including improvements to class and try catch. Scala 3.4 came out last year with improved patterns and type inference. And 3.5 came out with Scala CLI built in to improve running and testing your Scala code. Moving on to Haskell, the Glasgow Haskell compiler has had a new 2024 edition with various language extensions. And version 9.12 introduced multi-line strings, among other things. OCaml 5.2 came out, which is helping to stabilize things in the OCaml 5 world. And I try to keep an eye on Rock among functional languages. They have a cool WASM-powered REPL demo on their homepage. No big official releases yet, but a lot of continued work on the language. And among functional languages I saw getting some attention this past year, there's also the Lean Language and Theor Improver, which has definitely seen active development work during the past year. Moving on to Elixir, we see they're making good on their plans for some amount of static typing support and improved infrastructure like language server protocol. And of course, Elixir builds on the Beam platform for which Erlang is more of the core, and that has had its yearly release as well. Also including support for triple quoted strings. And perhaps one of the biggest news items of the past year is that Gleam 1.0 came out. I'm a sucker for 1.0 releases, so big props to Gleam here. There seems to be a great focus here on scope and design. And since 1.0, there's been a number of releases. These releases though, haven't really been adding features to the language. They've just been improving tooling and implementation and so on and so forth. They even have a roadmap now where you can see at a high level what they're working on. And mostly, it's not really serious language changes, just making what's there better. And I'd really love to spend more time in Gleam in the future. And the Clojure Lisp language for JVM had a release last year, which they claim is going to be their last release supporting Java 8. And in Lisp slash Schemeville, Racket had a number of releases last year also. And last but not least for Lisp, I saw some attention on Fennel, which is a Lisp language for Lua. So for those of you who like Lua and Lisp, probably got some cool things going on here. Vaguely in the OCaml land, we had Rescript 11 out this past year, which adds some new language features. And interestingly, I noticed they have a new uncurried mode, which is default. They believe will make it easier for newcomers to use the language. I find decision-making around currying to be interesting. And one of the languages I've always found interesting for quite a long time is Hacks, and they do have continued active development on this. And going from the mostly game dev area to the definitely game dev area, we saw some updates to GDScript in the Godot 3.4 release. Some of it is just generalizing GDScript features across the board, as well as supporting infrastructure. They've also added some improvements to GD extension for using other languages in the Godot game engine. Looking forward to Godot 4.4, they've already implemented typed dictionaries in GDScript. And if I remember the way arrays work in GDScript, I'm expecting that these will be runtime type checked in addition to static checking. Maybe someone out there who's used this can comment on whether I'm having the right expectation there or not. And also going forward in Godot 4.4, the C-sharp packages are moving to .NET 8, which is the current LTS release of .NET that came out in 2023. Moving on to NIM, 2.2 was released last year. That includes improvements to ORC memory management, which is a cyclical reference counting garbage collector. They also had some improvements to C++ interop and their JS backend. The Crystal language saw a number of releases last year, including improved support for the Windows operating system. And my understanding is that by and large, most things in Crystal do work in Windows these days. Zig saw a couple of releases this past year, including 0.12 that saw some language changes, including changes to compiler errors, in this case, an error for saying var when you don't need to. The Zig 0.13 release was a short cycle and primarily focused on upgrades to LLVM 18. Moving on to the D language, they have a regular quick release cycle, such as what we might see in Rust or TypeScript. And I have trouble keeping up with all the details, but there's definitely active work going on in D land. 
Odin also sees regular monthly updates, and it's still not at 1.0 yet, but it seems to be relatively stable. They've also added some core support for the Orca platform, which is another WebAssembly platform that I've mentioned occasionally in my Taka updates. And another language in the C alternative space, we saw a hair 0.24 released with a plan for how they'll actually manage their releases going forward. Still not at 1.0 yet though, and they still are making breaking changes in the future. And the C3 language had the 0.6 milestone come out this past year, among other updates. We also saw a lot of attention on the C3 language this past year, and usage of the language seems to be going up quite a bit in recent months. And also in this space, I want to look briefly at V, which I haven't really covered much in the past, despite some requests I've had. And independent of what you might think of the V language, it has seen continued development and improvement over the years. And also in the C space, I like to give attention to Roland as a rather well-developed and small C-like language. And for having been primarily a hobby project to start with, it's got a lot of work and maturity that's gone into it. And while it started out as a WebAssembly or WASM language, it also has the ability these days to compile to native code through the QBE backend, which I think might be the same backend that Hare uses. And in terms of other starting as hobby but taking serious projects, Tscript is a language that I've had a little bit of an eye on recently, which is a small, embeddable, interpreted language that seems rather clean to work with and might be a good fit for some projects out there. There's also a WASM-based demo that you can find linked here as well for trying this out in your browser. And speaking of WebAssembly, there are a number of proposals that got standardized over the past year, including garbage collection that more and more WASM languages out there seem to be either requiring or preferring in their code generation. So I need to start paying more attention to that as well at some point. And speaking of WASM programming languages, the Grain language had a new release this past year. It's a rather pretty language in the ML language space. And another language I've paid some attention to recently that's also in the ML space is Moonbit, which also primarily targets WebAssembly. Now, Moonbit is not permissively licensed, although you can use it for whatever software you want in terms of what you're writing. And that trend in not permissively licensed shared source code that we've seen more of a trend of, I find interesting. You know, competing with the big cloud providers of the world that have been accused somewhat of stealing open source projects in recent years. Moonbit also has JavaScript and native backends as well. And I want to try it out some in the future. And branching out a little bit, I really should look more at shell languages and shell scripting. One of the biggest ones out there that's interesting, I find, is New Shell that continues to see active development. I really need to try this out sometime. And before we go, I want to bring up Typist again, which, like I said, somewhat competes with LaTeX for typesetting documents. In a former life, I used LaTeX a lot, and because of that, I find Typist interesting, especially the way that it's getting a lot of attention these days. So that's my wrap up for 2024. There's awesome and great languages out there that I failed to cover. Feel free to discuss those in the comments. And I'm looking forward to a great 2025. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye, y'all.